Let's make a little meme out of that, just because Papa's fucking stupid. So let's make hashtag tangible somewhere in the comments. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. So, we are back with the series on my bachelor's paper, link in the description if you have no idea what I'm talking about right here. So you see, as a little means to make abstract um, concepts tangible, fucking face palm right here because in the first sentence or something of my bachelor's paper I've written tangible wrong with an A instead of an I. So let's make a little meme out of that just because Papa's fucking stupid. So let's make hashtag tangible somewhere in the comments. All of you, please. So as a means of examples and just, yeah, making stuff really tangible. So that's, that was meant to be serious actually. I wanted to introduce some numbers just because, um, yeah, numbers are easier to understand for most people than for example, A, B or Xi, I don't know. So that's why I was introducing those bad boys right here, called the natural numbers, positive integers, uh, counting numbers, for example. And for this, I was using the Peano axioms. You can also use the, what's it called, von Neumann construction of natural numbers, I think so. It's set theoretical, but this thing right here fits abstract algebra way more. That's why I was using this right here. Okay, Coolio, so what are axioms? Well, you have to start somewhere in mathematics. So you have to make a little assumption and just say it is true. We are going to assume it to be true, a few things. And with this, we have a little basis to construct other things in mathematics. Yeah, and those are just axioms. Things we are going to take for granted. We think are true. And, well, this guy right here, Peano, or whatever he was called, just thought, well, how do we understand the natural numbers? And he constructed five little rules. So at first we want to say that n is not equal to the empty set, so we want to have a non-empty set at first. And then we are going to put things into it, for example, the number zero, element of natural numbers right here. You can also start with number one as least element. I'm just using zero because it's such a beautiful number and it's causing so many fucking problems all the damn time in mathematics, but it's still really cool. That's why I included it also for example purposes. <laughs> okay, so we want this to be element of natural numbers, thus making this set non-empty by definition. Okay, and also we want for all n element of natural numbers that there exists some unique successor of this very number n. What's the successor? Well, the successor of 1 is just 2. The successor of um, 1,562 is just 1,563. That was a stupid example. Why did I choose such a big number? Never mind. So, you see, um, if we have n and then the successor of n is just n plus 1, you could say adding 1 to this n and you are at the successor. That's how we understand natural numbers. It comes really natural. <laughs> Okay, next rule, well, for all n element of natural numbers, well, there is no successor of n such that, well, we have zero in the end. So if we would include negative one, for example, in the natural numbers, da, 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 then we would have the successor of negative one being zero, but this doesn't work. Zero is so special, it's not the successor of any n element. It's, it's really cool, it's a really nice property. Really fucking cool. Making zero the least element, but that's something that you have to prove that it's really the least element. Okay, next one you would call injectivity in the normal case. Just meaning, well, if we have some m and n element of natural numbers and the successor of m equals to the successor of n, well, that just implies that m is equal to n. It does make sense if you think about it. That's how those bad boys right here work. And yeah, the last thing is just called the induction axiom. So by this axiom right here, you can actually define the principle of mathematical induction. I don't know for myself of a proof, but it does work. So there are many equivalent ways to formulate the principle of mathematical induction. Weak induction, strong induction, regular induction, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, they are all 
coming from the same thing. Yeah, what does it say basically? Well, we have a subset, a proper subset, or just a regular subset, S, subset of N, with the property that the least element is element of S, and also whenever we have some element S of S, then, well, that also means that the successor of S is element of S. And if those two rules hold, then, well, our subset are just the natural numbers itself. That's all it really says. So this was just a quick little introduction to the piano axioms. And with those and two little operations on the natural numbers, we can prove a lot of stuff, basically everything regarding operations on natural numbers. But what are those two little things we want to talk about? Well, people like to call them times and plus addition and multiplication. So many myths surrounding them. Basically, they are just plus and times. It's nothing special. And plus is corresponding to the usual addition how we know it. So, let's say we have an operation plus, and if you have watched my set theory video, well, you know that we just take two elements in the Cartesian product, so natural numbers, Cartesian product with natural numbers, and map it to a single element. So, natural numbers in Cartesian product with itself map to a single element. How can you re rewrite this? Well, we just take a pair, a, b, use this operation on it, and it's going to be mapped to some a plus b, being a new element c, for example. If we take plus of 3 and 5, we end up with 3 plus 5 being 8. Coolio, element of natural numbers, successor of 7, by definition. <laughs> but this right here also has to underlie some rules, otherwise we can't really yeah, proof anything in the end. So how do we as humans understand the natural numbers, the addition on the natural numbers? Well, the first rule is just if we take a number n and add zero to it, well, we just end up with the number itself. That's cool. Yeah, it, it does make sense. And this holds for all n element of natural numbers. So seven plus zero is just seven. Your dog plus zero is just your dog if you include dog in the natural numbers. <laughs> that would be fucking sick. And there's also another rule, which is quite important. Well, for all m and n element of natural numbers, holds that n plus the successor of m is nothing but, well, you can think about this yourself. So this is nothing but n plus m plus one, but this is nothing but n plus m plus 1, which is nothing but the successor of n plus m. Yeah, there we go. Those are the two rules that our addition underlies. And it's really quite cool. Okay, and we also have our multiplication. Let's talk about that. And the multiplication is really similar to this little um, function up here, you could say. If we have the multiplication, we define it as the Cartesian product of natural numbers with itself, mapped to natural numbers, in the sense that times a and b is being mapped to, well, a times b. For example, multiplication of 4 and 2 is just 4 times 2 is 8. Oh, 8 once again. That was quite a coincidence. That really wasn't planned. <laughs> I'm not planning out those videos. Um, I'm just talking a bit to you guys. And just like with the addition, it underlies two little rules for all n and m element of natural numbers. What could they be? Well, they have to include zero somehow once again, at least one of those. What about n times zero? So the first rule is n times zero. Well, what could that possibly be? Well, zero, that's how we understand the number zero. If we have nothing of something, we just have nothing of something. <laughs> really cool. So yeah, that's the first rule and it holds for all n element of natural numbers. And there's also a second little rule. And you can think about this for yourself once again. So for all n and m element of natural numbers, what do we have? Well, n times the successor of m. What could that be? We can think of this in a little bit different way. If you remember what the successor of m is, well, this is just n times m plus 1. 
We haven't talked about distributivity. It's something we have to prove, but just that you get an idea. Now we can just multiply all the factors together. So this is just n times m plus n. And that's exactly where we are going to land. So this right here is nothing but n times m plus n. And this is the second rule. And that something like this right here holds left distributivity is something that we can prove later in the game. And this is basically it I want to talk about for today. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, recommend the channel if you like. You can buy those t-shirts I created. If you don't want to, you can also support me on Patreon. If you don't want that either, then I don't know, just watch my videos and support me this way. Aber until the next video, have a piano axiom day. See ya. Love you guys.